Do your cloud job applications keep getting rejected? I know how it feels. As a self-taught cloud engineer now working for a top bank in London, I've mentored people and seen them fall for the same five mistakes leading companies to ignore their applications. The truth is, companies are desperately hiring for cloud jobs right now. But without fixing these mistakes, you'll keep wasting time getting rejection after rejection. The good news is, these are easy to fix and won't take much time. Sometimes, it could be as simple as changing a few lines on your resume, which is exactly what this first mistake is about. Suppose there's two cloud engineers, Sarah and Marcus. Sarah's a brilliant engineer who recently joined a big finance company. Her code was flawless. Her architecture proposals were great. Yet, her team's productivity actually decreased. Why? She had implemented automation tools without speaking to anyone. She hadn't considered the developer's existing workflows, and this created friction. Meanwhile, Marcus took a bit of a different approach. Before rolling out any changes, he spent time shadowing different team members, understanding their pain points, and gathering feedback. Even though his technical skills are weaker than Sarah's, people would still rather work with him. And this pattern repeats itself across the industry. A solutions architect might design great AWS infrastructure, but if they can't translate technical jargon into business outcomes like cost saving or faster time to market, client will be unconvinced. People working in cloud also have to deal with high pressure situations where some piece of critical infrastructure may be failing. In this case, soft skills are absolutely crucial. You know, engineers often prioritize learning technical skills. What's the best course to learn AWS or what's the best thing I can build? And although this is clearly important, it's a mistake to neglect soft skills on your job applications. But how do you actually demonstrate you have these skills? Resumes for cloud jobs are usually filled with technical keywords, which is good, but you can also rewrite achievements to show showcase your soft skills. For example, instead of used AWS EKS to migrate over 150 microservices, which resulted in 42% less failures, you could say something like, led cross-functional teams in migrating over 150 microservices from on-premises to AWS EKS, achieving 42% reduction in deployment failures through conducting weekly stakeholder meetings. This highlights your project management and collaboration skills without outright saying that you have these skills. You know, a common mistake that I think some people make is to write on their resume that they're an excellent communicator or great leader. But they don't have any proof to back this up. When you focus on outcomes instead, it comes across much better. But what about when you actually get an interview? Cloud hiring managers often ask scenario-based questions to assess soft skills. For example, they could ask you to describe a time you had to convince stakeholders to adopt an unpopular technical decision. A bad response would be something like, I once recommended moving to Terraform. Some people resisted, but I explained it was better. A better response would be, our client opposed migrating to infrastructure as code due to perceived learning curves. As lead architect, I needed to secure approval for Terraform adoption by the end of next quarter. So I conducted workshops comparing manual error rates versus infrastructure as code trials and paired reluctant engineers with ones that were familiar with Terraform. I presented my findings to the client. Eventually, they approved the initiative. Within six months, 70% of infrastructure was codified, cutting deployment delays by 40%. Why is this response better? Well, it paints a full picture of the situation, what the problem was and what exactly the person did and what the result was. This is known as the STAR technique, which stands for situation task, action, result. Taking a look again at the response, you can see how it fits this star structure. And I would recommend using this in interviews to highlight your soft skills. But in order to actually get the interview, you need to apply for the jobs that suit your skills. The problem is, there's a common mistake some people are making that is limiting the number of jobs available to them. But before we talk about that, if you're looking to improve your cloud skills in just five minutes a week, then subscribe to my email newsletter in the description below. Every week, I share simple, useful tips and educational content. So Maria here wants to try baking cookies. Her recipe calls for baking soda, but her local store is out of stock. She's about to leave empty handed until the shop assistant stops her and says, they have sodium bicarbonate on aisle three. Maria realizes that they're actually the same thing just labeled differently. And this problem happens during the cloud job search too. Using only one term like cloud engineer can make you miss out on opportunities that fit your skills but are listed under different titles like DevOps engineer or platform engineer. But why does this happen and what can we do about it? Basically, there aren't standardized definitions on what a DevOps engineer or cloud engineer does. This can depend on a few things. For example, the size of the company can influence job titles. Larger companies might use more specialized titles, whereas smaller companies may go for broader ones. Companies in different areas of the world might also use different titles to describe similar roles according to what is common in that particular country. So as an example, a cloud engineer role could ask for AWS skills as expected, but a platform engineer role could ask for the exact same skills. If you were only searching for cloud engineer, you could have missed out on lots of different job postings. But what can you do about it? First, 
Make a list of different job titles that match what you want to do. For example, if you're interested in cloud engineering, your list would include titles like cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, platform engineer. And a good way to find these different titles is to use LinkedIn. Instead of searching for job titles, you can search for specific skills that the job posting wants. Then go through your list of different titles on job boards and see if the description matches with what you're looking for. But in order to maximize your chances of getting these opportunities, you're going to want to fix this next common mistake. To understand this mistake, let's talk about stock traders before everything was done on computers. Back then, the most successful traders weren't the ones sitting at home reading yesterday's newspaper. They were the ones standing on the trading floor, hearing the news as it happened. They had a huge advantage because they could act on information first. The cloud computing industry moves with that same kind of speed. Just like those trading floors, things change by the minute. AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud are constantly evolving, pushing out hundreds of updates every year. And just like those successful traders who planted themselves on the trading floor, the people who attend events like the AWS Summit or AWS reinvent, get to hear all the latest developments and learn from experts across the industry. You can see real demos and use cases that are being used by companies across a wide range of different areas. But how does this help you during the job search? After all, you could just find all the information from the event online too, or watch the live stream. Well, you've probably heard the saying, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And this is true. According to Forbes, around 85% of jobs are now filled through networking. So even though I don't think you should try and meet people for the sake of adding them to LinkedIn, I do think it's important to put yourself out there at these events and try to build real genuine connections. The connections that you gain from attending these real life events can't be replicated online. I've been amazed by the number of experts that I've been able to talk to and learn from just by attending these events. In fact, many of the tools that cloud engineers use are open source. For example, Terraform. When you go to meetups and tech events, you can meet other people working with these tools, maybe even contributing to them. And you can really gain a lot of useful tailored advice from these people in terms of how they use the technology, what their workflow is, or how they would recommend learning it as a beginner. So the mistake here is not attending enough cloud related meetups. I think this is something that is particularly useful for people at the start of their careers and something I definitely wish I did sooner. But where do you find these meetups? Personally, I found good ones in London by using meetup.com. These range from casual coffee meetups to more structured workshops and talks. Now, this is probably easier in bigger cities, so you may have to travel once in a while if you're in a bit of a smaller town. Cloud providers also host their own events. For example, AWS has an events page that has all of their upcoming events. But there's something else that people are doing that they think is helping their applications, but is secretly sabotaging their chances. Imagine a chef called Marco who wants to impress a famous food critic visiting his town. Marco's desperate to stand out, so he cooks every single dish he knows. Pizza, sushi, burgers, tacos, you name it. He ends up rushing around the kitchen and not really doing anything well. The critic takes one bite and leaves. Well, what did Marco do wrong here? He thought, if I cook everything, the critic must like something. But in reality, the critic wanted one perfect dish, not 10 half-finished ones. And this logic applies to cloud job searches too. This is what happens when people use the spray and pray method, where you apply to hundreds of cloud jobs with the same generic resume without tailoring your application. But why is it so bad to apply for lots of cloud jobs? Surely the more jobs you apply to, the more likely you are to get at least one, right? Well, remember that Marco tried to be a sushi chef, a burger flipper, and a pizza maker all at once. But no restaurant wants to hire someone that does everything. Cloud jobs are the same. Think about it. Would you trust someone who claims to be an expert at everything? Well, neither do employers. They know that true expertise comes from focusing on specific areas. A resume that tries to cover everything signals that you aren't focused on anything in particular. Imagine if Marco served that critic a frozen pizza. The critic would know it's not special, and employers can feel the same. They can tell when a resume is copied and pasted. When they see a generic application, they know you haven't taken the time to really understand the company or the role. Many companies use applicant tracking systems or ATS to screen resumes now. These are basically robots looking for specific keywords that match the job description. But the generic resumes often fail these checks because they don't include the right specific terms. So does this mean that you can only apply to one or two companies? Not necessarily. Here's what I like to do. I think it's a good idea to start by creating a baseline resume that highlights your core cloud skills. Then when you spot a role you like, it takes time to really analyze the job description. For a cloud security role, for example, the job description might mention security tools like GuardDuty or Security Hub. Next, rewrite your resume to better match what they're asking for. If you're going for a cloud security role, emphasize the security aspects of a project that you've worked on. For example, implementing least privilege access or setting up WAF rules. The key is to spend time on roles that genuinely match your skills and interests. There is no limit to the number of applications you can do. If you have the time, you know, you can still apply for a lot of companies, but your application will stand out a lot more this way. But there's no use spending all this time applying for the right jobs if you're making this next mistake, and it involves your certifications. Think about a chef who's only read cookbooks but never cooked a meal. That's exactly what happens when your resume relies mainly on certifications. Companies aren't just looking for people who can pass tests. They want to see that you've solved real-world problems. 
This Redditor says that if you're serious about going cloud engineer slash DevOps, then certifications in self-learning might help you get to an interview stage, but rarely will it land you a job directly into these roles. Now, yes, it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation here. On one hand, you need a job to get experience, but on the other hand, you need experience to get a job. But you don't need a job to start building projects. You can start learning and building things on your own. Even if they're not enterprise level applications, they still showcase your skills. You know, when things go wrong in a live environment, theoretical knowledge alone won't be enough for companies. Every day, cloud engineers face unexpected issues that never appeared in their certification exams, applications that suddenly stop communicating, security breaches that need immediate attention, or performance issues that affect thousands of users. These are the moments where hands-on experience becomes really important. The problems you encounter while building your own projects and the late-night debugging sessions mimic what the day-to-day is like on the job, and employers like to see that and love to talk about it during interviews. So the mistake here is relying too much on certifications on your resume and not highlighting any projects that you've done. The solution is simple. Complement your certifications with hands-on projects. But you're probably thinking, okay, I've heard it all before. I know I need to do projects, but where can I actually find them? The first project I usually recommend is the Cloud Resume Challenge. This is where you build a resume slash portfolio website using cloud services. It's beginner-friendly and really challenges you to solve things for yourself, kind of like how you would in a real job. If you get stuck, there's an active community on Discord that you can reach out to for help and also plenty of information online. So now that you know how to avoid the common mistakes in cloud job applications, Here's the harsh truth. You can nail your application perfectly and still end up in a role you hate or that's underpaid. The cloud job industry is changing a lot every year and new jobs are always popping up. So it's important to be aware of what jobs are actually available out there. Well, click here to find out the top cloud computing jobs for 2025 and how much each one is paid.